your trial shall triumph you. Amen. I also told you that your testing shall result to testimony. Amen. There is a woman crying here very strongly. Very strongly. Uh, he has a family problem. The was preaching. He said that Jesus Christ does not know the truth. That Jesus himself is the truth. And that means that... Where did you get that? Receive it. Uh -huh, that's it. Oh! It. Miracle is the smallest thing the Lord does. Because God himself is miracle. The Lord chose Daniel to enter there to make you understand that the unchangeable God can destroy the unchangeableness of man. My name is Brother Theodore. I'm from away in Milkwater. It happened that about two weeks ago, man of God said that those people who are absenting themselves from weekly activities of the church don't know what they are missing. That the Lord has been doing many things for those who came in. But I remember that I used to attend some of these things, but due to one thing or the other, I found myself lagging. But that very day, when man of God made this statement, I told God Almighty, I am one of the people who have sent themselves from all the weekly activities. But I want you to do something in my life. This something must be spectacular so that I will stand in the congregation of the saints and tell them that every prophetic word that comes out of the man of God is not just a fluke, but there is always something in it that with my testimony, many shall know. And those who were formerly accepting themselves like me will know that the Lord is doing something here. Not that the Lord just confined himself here, but here the Lord is very awesome. Amen, brethren. Amen. So what happened? Those people that normally work at VI know the traffic chaos which we normally face from that place. But after I asked God to prove himself to me, it happened that on Monday, I entered vehicle from Bonnet Camp. Before you know it, brethren, the whole road was free until I got to Orile bus stop. And I immediately enter into my house and tell my family that I'm going to anointing service. Amen, brethren. Do you used to come to anointing service before? I, but not regularly. Not regularly. But your word that very day mm. touched me in such a way that I said, God Almighty, I've heard what you said through your servant. And I want you to prove yourself to me so that I will stand in the congregation of the saints and tell them that indeed you are the true God. That we are missing something by not being by not putting up in all these uh, weekly activities. And all the Lord right. answered me. Amen, okay. brethren. Okay. It happened again on Tuesday. After I closed from work, then I entered vehicle, and the Lord cleared the road until I found myself into the prophetic Bible study. Amen, brethren. Hallelujah. You better hand on to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord deserves more than that. Okay. Amen, brethren. Yeah, amen. And I don't know what the Lord has prepared for me. It turned out to be that the messages of anointing service and, bi and prophetic Bible studies were meant for me because I claimed it that very day. So, that very Tuesday night, after the Bible study, like any other person, we went home. So, we went to bed. Sorry to uh, interrupt you. That is, you came to anointing service. Yes, sir. I you was came present, for prophetic Bible study. I was very much alive in all those two uh, activities. So, since then, you have been coming? Continually. Uh, the Lord had helped me. All right, go ahead. Then you went into sleep. Brethren. Okay. So, like any other person, we went to bed on Tuesday night. Then, around 3 a.m., they said that one million boys entered into a compound. They pulled the, uh, the gate at the backyard. From there, about 15 of them entered into the compound and start opening all the rooms, all the apartments. I mean, you know their business. They started taking both money, valuables and everything. And even some people that gave them money, they used machete and cut their back. In your compound or neighboring compound? In my own compound because ever since I came to Lagos, I only hear these stories, but I've never witnessed them. But not knowing that, even in the company where I live, 
this kind of thing could happen. But the Lord, in his infinite mercy, made me and my family sleep like a baby inside. Yeah. You know, that was the area that um, I, uh, I was uh, a little bit um, agitated, you know. Uh, he, he lives in the premises. He said, in the morning they said... I don't know where I get yes, that sir. message. Yes. But he lives in the he same compound. In the same compound. But he said sleeping comfortably yeah. and when he woke up they I, said they yes. said they said yes sir. Because <laughs> <laughs> Amen brethren. Not until uh, when police arrive at the scene around 5 a.m. They raised gunshot. Then I woke up. So what is going on? Not knowing that the whole members of the yard where we live had all of them ran out. Except me and my family sleeping like baby inside the room. <laughs> Amen, brethren. I never knew that the Lord would answer me that way. I never knew, but uh, hold on. But he said they, when they came, they opened all the uh, all rooms, all the uh, apartments. Uh, so that's the area I didn't understand. Did they open it or did they break it? They used their both the weapon they carry and their leg, destroy those things and force themselves into those places. Oh, and they were they break the they whole break, doors. Yes, they through the back door they came into the compound. Okay, broke, they so they break it. all the doors yes. and we're entering. They were banging and banging, but the Lord made it's me. A, hold on, hold on. Oh. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hey. You see, the, the exciting thing there is, how come all those, because you see, something breakage has to do with bang. Yes. And, sound. and uh, that's what I mean. Yes. Bang, sound. That was loudness yes. that must wake everybody in the premises. Yes. And we didn't, didn't you hear those breakage, breaking doors and windows? Didn't you hear it? Sir. The Lord I am serving, who said that he is my protector, and that the Lord is visiting this house. The Lord is my defender. He defended him and allowed me to sleep like our Lord Jesus Christ when he was in the boat, and the, there was boisterous wind. The apostles called him, Lord, don't you care for our life? He went, and I mean, he got up and said, be, be still. That is how the Lord get me and my family. We were sick in this Hey, hey, oh, okay, you are trying to remind us what the scripture says that he giveth his beloved exactly, sleep. Sir. Exactly, sir, because since I moved into that compound, the vigilantes knew that anything that happened along that street, I will know that even one of them asked me, Oga, you know they sleep. If there's anything, we we'll always before you know before we know it, you know it. But that very day, the Lord made me to have an unusual sleep. All right, okay, that's all right, sir. Go on. Amen, brethren. Amen. I promise the Lord that I will come out and testify this wonderful and exceptional miracle in the congregation of saints, just to tell us. That apart from God being awesome in this place, anytime we hear any word from the apostle, we must believe it because this is exactly what Jehoshaphat told the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, according to Bible book of Second chapter twenty verse twenty, that they should listen to the prophets and also obey the word of the Lord. Amen, brethren. The Lord is awesome in this place. One, whether one million or one billion people shall never be a portion. Only put their trust in the Lord. Amen, brethren. A big answer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. 
Bless God for that awesome testimony. Uh, what just happened? I, I, was dis- I was distracted now by some letter. <laughs> Somebody wrote a letter to us now. Okay. Yes, I was distracted by that. What happened now? We were just applauding the Lord Jesus Christ for this awesome testimony that he had given. Yes, did you know he, he testified uh, to the congregation in the daytime. Yes, sir. But there are some of our brethren that are not Around, uh, yes, of sir. this congregation. Yes, we have maybe in More, Alaba, and other yes, congregations. Yes. Then I wanted to ask, I mean, you mentioned of uh, having... You know, these anointed stickers, they, they, of course, we know what that sticker did two weeks ago. The testimony we had. is The Lord is even raising the dead by that. It is true, sir, because after I came and testified on Tuesday last week, man of God asked me, do I have any of the stickers in my house? I said, yes, I have about five of them. And by special grace of God, one of them said that the Lord is visiting this house now. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my protector. And that also, my God is my hero. So all these things, not until when those people operated willfully. Where do you place them? them? Did you stick them anywhere? They are at the entrance of my door. Before anybody enters, they are boldly placed there. Uh, I see. Uh, I'm sure someone might have learned something, you know, uh, uh, from this testimony. Number one is, you know, he began by anointing service and prophetic Bible study. He began by that. That he, and again, I learned from his testimony that obedience might have worked out this miracle for him. And to be honest with you, only God knows what happens at the prophetic Bible study during the typological uh, teaching and maybe some other summaries. And about anointing service is what they call in Igbo land in those days, Obunigwe. It's a terrible thing. It's, it's a bazooka. Is a destroyer. So, because anointing destroys every yoke. So, he began with anointing service on Monday. This anointing service is for you. Well, God might have appointed for you that day for something. But if you're not around, the Lord takes it and put it in the store. Is in the store waiting for you. Because what God has appointed for you, he cannot deny you of that. Because he has made up his mind. So any day you come, you receive it. That's how the Lord is doing. You can see that. So now, in obedience, and like God fearing too, he prayed a prayer like Nehemiah, like Ezra. You know, speaking to God directly. Show me a sign. So the Lord showed him a sign. The sign the Lord showed him was to send the marauders to his compound. It was not a mistake. The Lord allowed that so that he would take glory. Now the Lord is glorified. Yes. As you mean they didn't come there that day, will this testimony come? No. Uh, there you are. That's why I tell you that your trial shall triumph you. Amen. I also told you that your testing shall result to testimony. Amen. I said that. Look at that. You see? So, he... He demonstrated the faith. So learn lesson from there to begin with. That's the most essence of this testimony. You know, that the Lord blindfolded the marauders. They could not break into his house. He is one of the commonest things the Lord will do. He is the one of the smallest things the Lord can do. Of course, yes. What of when, uh, you remember, when the soldiers of Syria you know, came to arrest Elisha. And uh, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, blindfold their eyes. Their eyes were open. They came to Elisha and said, we are looking for Elisha. He said, who we are looking for is not here. Not this one. This is a regenerated one. There are other Elishas. Come. I want to take you to whom you are looking for. 
He took them into the, <laughs> into the land of Israel. They forgot themselves. They were seeing him. The more they looked, the nothing they saw. So, all these things are very small things. Miracle is the smallest thing the Lord does. Because God himself is miracle. That is the miracle himself. So, but what we must derive is the will of God for us. What does God want us to do? That is more important to him. You know, that's why salvation of your spirit, soul, and body is the greatest miracle one can receive. But all these things, well, they are very good because they keep us comfortable. But they are mundane in the sight of God. They are one of the smallest things God can do. This thing now that happened, is so awesome, it's so serious. Why did they cross over? How many times didn't some people come out here in the morning? Some daddies and some other young men, they testified how God protected them too in support of his testimony. Look at that. But there is something, you know you distracted me here, I come this way. You distracted me. Uh, can you see, see, I don't know. You, you caused some distraction here. Uh, it's, yes, I don't know what you said. Uh, what, what, can you give in the mic? Let's see. Because you got the whole information. So what can we do now? Uh, this, this is a written testimony, but I believe the brother is here and will come out uh, to physically confirm that. Uh, it's written by brother Richard. He said, I was healed of stooling blood. After Apostle asked me to hold him at last Sunday's healing and deliverance service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Richard, if you are here, come forward. Let us hear from you this awesome miracle God has done. God bless you. How awesome in this place, mighty God. Awesome in this place, Abba Father. We are worthy of our praise. You are awesome. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Please take your seat. Let us uh, listen to, I don't know when this happened, but um, something you. happened. Yes. I hope that mic is fine. Yes, sir. Okay, good. It's fine. God bless you. Tell us your name. We just read from uh, our pastor now, so we want to confirm the, what we heard from our pastor. Now. Was he the one that are wrote it? Person, are you the person that wrote it? Yes, sir. Brethren, praise the Lord. Brethren, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Bra Richard. Um, I worship at Iba Center before I moved away just around December. Because of the hold up, I had to move to Okota area. But since we moved to Okota since um, December, we have not been able to locate any of the center around there. So I do come with my family on Sundays for, for fellowship. About three Sundays ago, when we came around, Apostle announced that there will be healing and deliverance service come, come. that started last Sunday, which was on the 19th. Come here, come. So immediately after the first it's service in the morning, the, I quickly took one of my daughter that is in a boarding school. school. I quickly took I her to her school at Yaba. Then around 3 o'clock, I was here already. I was sitting somewhere at the second row there. Then there was this period when Apostle said everybody will be coming on two, two, two rows each. Before then, I was worried because I think uh, around last month, I had a course to travel to my village. I'm from Delta State. I went for two barriers on two occasions. And the last one, when I came back, I noticed that each time I go to the toilet, I was stooling blood. Brethren, I was scared, but because I don't want my wife to panic, I kept it secret. I didn't want to tell her. Each time I go to the toilet, I stew pure blood. Then about three years ago, I had this um, um, illness that they said is ulcer, and I was taken to Lagoon Hospital, where some of our brethren came to visit me, even our pastor, Pastor Gospel, who was our pastor at uh, Iba Center then. 
Then I went to the hospital, then everything, you know, I was okay. But this period when I traveled home, I noticed that when I came back, I was still in pure blood. But behold, last Sunday when we came for this uh, program, I was sitting down there. The, the, the ushers were ushering everyone, everyone to go in two, two rows. When it was my turn, I came around here and I was in the front row here. Behold, I think I must say that I'm most favored. Most favored in the sense that other, other people that came out, they received touch. What were you diagnosed of? About three years ago, I was sick. I had them, um, they call it a um, the kind of internal bleeding, like an ulcer. Were you asked of certain things you should avoid when you eat your food? Yes, I was asked to avoid oily food. Oily food? Yeah. Um, you say, but our Lord Jesus Christ is bringing your body normal now. Amen. 100%. And then you have a testimony. Um, this is the first day you came here? No. Okay. Is this where you fellowship? Yes. You have a testimony? Amen. The Lord is normalizing your body? Amen. Can you come here? like go for another test and then you eat as you eat but only eat uh, too much of everything is very bad so you eat moderately and you're okay jesus has made you whole Amen. he has changed that diagnosis from apostle two but when it came to my turn apostle asked me to come out i was worried you understand when he asked me to come out he prophesied to me that i had an issue that I went to the hospital some few years ago, I said yes. Then Apostle tapped my hand and prayed. He was not satisfied, he asked me to come out. Then he asked me to hold him. You understand? Just to embrace him. I have to embrace him. You can watch it on the footage. Embrace him. That last Sunday, he embraced, I embraced him and he also embraced me. Behold, the anointing that came out cured everything. Hallelujah! That is the footage. Somebody shout Jesus! Brethren, I must confess that it was an instant healing. Because mainly I got home, I told my wife, say, do you know what happened? Because she attended this last protect part-time uh, program. She wasn't chance to come with me, but my daughters and my children, they were all here. They even said that they saw it on television. I said yes. So they were upstairs. Then when I got home, I told my wife, sir, you missed a lot too. He said, eh. I said, do you know that among all the brethren that came for the deliverance service, I was the only one. I was that had the opportunity or that was picked by the apostle by asking me to hold him and he held me. You understand? I said I'm highly favored. And when I got home, when I got home that evening, brethren, I was not willing to go to the toilet. You understand? But in the morning, when I got to my office on Monday morning, my tummy started troubling me. Then I went to my toilet. I have a private toilet there. Brethren, when I went there, I just stood. I mean, I squatted on the WC and I stood. And when I was stooling, normally it was when you stood watery stool, you know the difference between when you are stooling a watery stool and a, a strong one. What came out was watery. What came out was watery. Mainly, I was about to stand up. I was just watching. 
I was scared and watching, trying to see what I have stood. Behold, when I came out, there was no single drop of blood. And evidence, brethren. Yes. Sorry, it was a stool, but it's not smelling. I mainly I picked my cell phone and snapped what I stooled out. It was just ordinary feces. There was no pinch of blood, brethren. I was so happy that I couldn't hold it. Even that same day when we had meeting, I had meeting with my staff. I had to share the testimony with them. Say, listen, look at what has happened to me. That I'm I'm highly favored, and I believe the Lord has done it. He completed his job. Oh my brethren, we go. Sit a little bit. Let's sit a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. We are coming, we are coming. Hallelujah! Somebody shout Jesus! Um, sir, get over there. Uh, we're going to confirm your miracles. Uh, um, what have you to say? You are trying to bring in somebody. Yeah, this sister, uh, our sister here said she has a similar testimony related to what this our brother just testified. God bless you, sister. Yes. Let us hear from you. Come forward, sister. God bless you. Tell us your name and what God has done for you. I'm Sister Victoria Inoue from Seven Up Water. Praise Master Jesus! Praise Jesus! The Lord is good! In Jesus' mighty name, I go to testify.
my testimony goes like this. Um, that is three thousand days ago. We went to Enigu to go and pay my son's wife a diary. Even before we went, then to go to such a place now, you know now money. So I make a vow. Then I call my daughter, I call my brother, that they should support me and uh, my sons to go to that uh, place. Like two months of the time, they didn't care of anything. But the time don't they near now, they didn't care then. That on Sunday night, make we so see the prosperity offering. That uh, anybody when he needs something, should sow seed. I sow my seed. Even we never went to that uh, any good, to that uh, that repayment. That Sunday now, I sit down near the pillar there. Then, man of God begin to they look me. He they look. He they look. He they point like this. He say you go receive call. After you receive call, you receive something. Come and testify it. You go look. He look up to three times. If some people maybe if they put eyes down, they go watch and they go listen to what man of God is saying. So he do want me to three times. I say this man of God is spiritual. My <laughs> now spirit. I begin to talk out between me. So, as I'm going that day, dropping in our, our bus stop, closing to our street, before you know my daughter, he begin, my phone begin to the ring. He said, mommy, oh, he said, he want to, he don't say something, make I uh, bring Byron and the uh, book to take the detail. I said, but I'm returning from Shosho. That very moment, oh, I never reached house. As I'm returning from Shosho, so I never reach out, but where this one don't reach my hand, and I go stay by the side of the road to collect the detail. <laughs> when I never reach out, I collect that uh, detail when my daughter says something to me. Because man of God said, we, we are going to receive. And I receive it. He said, follow him night be money. That, that day is Sunday. He said, follow him tomorrow, you go and collect your money. I said, okay, God bless you. Then on Monday again, when my son returned from work, now he called me mommy. Oh, my brother sent money to his own account oh, that when he collected the money, he should give me small. <laughs> Praise Pastor Jesus. So that then and when we came here, I came here to write a, a, for my testimony for how God helped me to touch my daughter and my brother to help us. And I want to testify for how God will carry us through. That day, I write my name for the people when they come out for, for that testify. That is Sunday before last. So when I write a, a, my own testimony on Monday now, then Satan says, oh yeah, Shebi, you say you are going to testify what God do for you. Oh yeah, go church. Go, continue to go and go and testify now. Before you know, on that Sunday now, now I write, I write the, tes the testimony. The, the phone is Sunday now. Now we go come here to come. Sorry, and sister. If let me let me help you out. Your testimony is two in one. First of all, you gave that offering, the two ways offering the apostle um, prophesied that those who have enough should give at uh, a, a side, and those who do not have at all should give at the other side. And you gave the offering and stood here and were pointing and looking at you. And you felt the Holy Spirit was directing, talking to you directly. And immediately you started receiving the blessing that same day. Then that Monday that he even prophesied exactly, you received the blessing completely. Yes. Now, you want to come and testify of what God has done for you. Yes. Then another temptation came up. Yes. Okay. So, that on Monday now, before you know, just they, they, they came with malaria. They came to my body with malaria. Before I know, I go to the toilet any morning. And when I get up, the whole toilet full with the blood. This blood issue, how did you get your miracle? It started on that Monday. Okay. When it started on that Monday, they did they move me to go to the toilet. When I go to the toilet, blood will go full everywhere. Blood will go full of everywhere. For how many days or how long? It take a week and uh, one day. I call Bishop Ovier, he pray. We receive it. Now the thing comes seriously. <laughs> Before you know now, the children say, oh yeah, call daddy now. 
They try apostle, you know, go. They try before he go. Then when we begin to ask, explain to apostle, then apostle say, my sister, God don't deliver you. Then he say, I should take water, put for cup. Then he begin pray. He pray, he, he, he pray, he pray to Almighty God. All these prayer were on phone yeah. with the apostle. Phone, phone, phone. phone. At that time, now no, I not get body to move. Eyes, they told me the body, all the body they shake. If you can see me, I never even get myself. You see, so when he pray, pray, pray with me, then he said I should drink the water. Even before he conclude, I don't drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he said. Ah. He asked me whether sister, you don't drink the. I said I already drink it. He said sister, you are a wonderful sister. Then. Before you know now, that Monday evening uh, anointing service, now I call a man of God that evening time. Then according to my, the testimony of my brother like this, if I want to go to toilet like this, I begin to the fear. I saw they go shit uh, brother again. But after this prayer, I'm telling you, that uh, Tuesday morning, that is this Tuesday morning when it passed so. When I went to toilet, I saw, I called my shit, I said, I'm going to toilet again. No. I begin to the shake. So when I go to the toilet, I just sit down small like this. I begin to get up around 6 o'clock. I look. Nothing. Then I begin to push myself. I look. Nothing. Hey! I say, God, you are a wonderful God. So... Even when I went to the toilet like that, my last born he began to they wait me for the for the door side outside. When I come out, he said, "Mommy, how now? How now? You don't come, man of God, though. How now? How now? You should shoot blood again." I said, "Nothing like that, or no blood, though." This one, when I'm telling you now, up to this very moment, even he do me so tell that uh, Tuesday, I go to the toilet out of out of four times because when a man of God talk to me, say, "My sister." Then this one, when he pray with me now, not that he go just stop at once. He say gradually, gradually, he will stop. But gradually, gradually, when he, he talk, will not be like that too. Immediately he pray that blood will stop. I can believe that blood. Hallelujah. A big hand, a big hand, a big hand. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord we praise this. Three days uh, this thing now, uh, because of the body, I lose, I short blood a lot. I begin to the shake as they told me. I couldn't come on, on that Friday, yesterday. But today now, as I'm coming, my children say, as you are shaking like this, as I'm going, I not go, I not die for house. Now church I go, I go come die. I'm going to the church. God don't deliver me. Even I don't want to testify for ordinary math like this. So I said, I'm going to prepare it. I'm going to prepare the testimony. Now my hand reach, I'm going to prepare it. Because it's not, it's not easy. Stooly blood, stooly blood is not easy. It's not easy, but with Jesus, it is easy. God, God deliver me. Amen. Shall we give a wonderful clap offering unto the Lord Jesus? Let's give a clap offering unto the Lord Jesus. My name is Brother Frank Ogu. So, three weeks ago, I went for a meeting somewhere to meet my clients. So as I was coming, before I left the place, I saw my leg, my two legs, swollen up. You know? You know, I thought it was, a, it was a joke. So later, when I got up... You thought it was a joke? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when I got up, I saw... I, I, that is conspiracy I, of the devil. Go ahead. I continue um, watching the leg. So he keep on swelling up. So they said that if I want to wear shoe, it takes me time to wear shoe. So last Sunday, our uh, daddy, after the program, after the fellowship, so he gave us, uh, there's a sticker he gave to us. So I took that sticker. Or oh, the one I said, I'm don't giving them free. Free, free. Don't, don't you give to us free? Ah. So I took that sticker. So I took a rubber band as well, wrap it in my leg and sleep. I pray. Well, can yeah. you remember this? No, I, didn't, I didn't get that. What did he say now? I wrapped the sticker on my leg with a rubber band. With a rubber band. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you put sticker there. You you put rubber. Yes, sir. That uh, rubber band to bind it very well. To bind it very well. To not fall away. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. And what happened then? So 
You slept with it. I slept with it. You slept. Yes. So the next day, I remove it. I just keep on watching it. Can you remember the title of the sticker? I could not remember. The sticker is here now. I just saw it now again. So yesterday again. So that is said we should open our hand. So when we open our hand, and after the after the prayer, I just use the hand. Say we should lay our hand in anywhere we are having pain. So I just lay the hand on that leg. Believe you me, this morning I look at the leg. I didn't see anything again. It was disappeared. Um, no, I didn't quite get this testimony. Uh, when? Can you ask him when this thing, when, when it happened? When did you start experiencing Yeah, when did you, when, which of your yeah, legs? when did it go? When did you, when did you, you wrap that thing, put a rubber band and left, everything. That was so dramatic. My left leg, my left leg. Though it was a two leg, but the left leg is more bigger than the other one. So, but I wrapped the sticker on the left leg. And uh, what you wrapped it, that's all. That, you look so funny, isn't it? <laughs> How can you wrap it? Uh, is that a, a socks? I, so we, I've been hearing testimony of other people, so I believe that that sticker also will do the same thing. That was why I put it there. Okay, when you put it, what was the result you got? I didn't see any swollen leg again. So when you l l lay your hand to, to, uh, to, to lay on it, but you didn't see the, the swollen again? After I put the sticker, yes. I, the next day I removed it, I went to work. The, the swollen leg is still there, but not all that like before again. But it was yesterday, after the prayer, that you said we should open our pen so that you pray. After prayer, so I laid that hand on that leg, the two of them. This morning, I didn't see anything again. Wow. You know, I didn't quite get that before. What I pictured in my memory is that you laid that word of God, not upside down, where the word of God was written. And you put it there, yes. and uh, something happened. Yes. Yeah, that was all I, I, I know. I didn't know it protracted till yesterday, and you have to lay your hands on it. And when you laid your hands on it, then uh, it disappeared yesterday. Yes, all right? So I didn't quite get that. All right. Now, God bless you. God bless you. Please go back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Lord is good. In fact, uh, it was yesterday that my case was mentioned here. Because my father was a chief in our village. So before you know it, as I traveled to bury my senior brother, so I, I found out that uh, the reason why that my father got to that uh, village, because there was a place he was living, before the, because of the trouble there. They brought him, he, he decided to bring his people out of that place because of the sudden death that made him to create that uh, compound. So they call it a uh, in uh, Boy State. So for that case, since then, all my senior ones, we reached up to 20 something because uh, you know that old people, they marry many wives. Before you know it, the thing have continue. Even my uh, father could not uh, die the, an uh, old age. Before all my brethren, the... He says it continued. What continued? Was it dead or any... They died. They died. Even the women... They started dying one after the other. Yes, even the women. So now it remains... As a result of what? At, the, at the, that a result, he came to live in another place. I don't know, you know, the devil, if you don't cast, if the power of God never entered there, it will still monitoring you. Sorry, if I may help you, were you one of those the apostle prophesied concerning um, a family trait that is hereditary, death, uh, you know, terms of sickness, what kills the father, kills the children and all that? Yes, yeah, so like uh, yesterday, before you know it, I came out. And uh, before you that apostle prophesied prophesied prospered apostle prospered he prospered he prospered daniel prospered so uh, pastor will prosper bishop will prosper apostle prospered and that's who prosper the whole everything <laughs> as even this my leg it was just paining me that i can't sleep in the night since when have you been experiencing that? Uh, since uh, as, uh, such a thing happened yesterday, I went back to my seat. 
Okay, you mean after he prayed for you? Uh, the pain started uh, going down. Okay. So even when that I, is why I was asking you, since when have you been experiencing that pain on your leg? The pain has been up to th three years. I've been uh, many pastors. So you have been having that pain for three years, and you were one of those that were that experienced that prophecy and healing took place. Okay, explain. So as I came now, after the prayer, I, I went back to my seat there. Before you know it, I started uh, feeling release. That all my body, even when I was coming, I sat up up to three places before I could reach uh, from a terrible stop there. So, but I, when I was going... That was a result of the pain, yes. to see how severe the pain was. Yes. So, when I was going, I couldn't notice again. Hallelujah. If you want to give Jesus a clap offering, let's give him a befitting clap offering. This is an awesome testimony. He received two in one testimony. One, the prophecy of the hereditary death. And now, he didn't even tell the apostle what he was passing through. Three years pain. And he got his healing. Mm. So, another thing is that as I reached home, I explained this thing to my wife. Then I went to sleep. I just slept like a baby. Around uh, 6 30, that's when I wake up in the morning. So I begin to thank God. Have you been sleeping like that before? Sleep. Before you know it, I pray prayer midnight by force. Because when I look that I don't have any other thing, I begin to read my Bible. I, I pray to God. So yesterday, I slept. Even now, I, you can see me jumping up. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got three blessings, three miracles yesterday. You were delivered from that family um, death and idol, and you received your healing of three years leg pain. What part of the leg, sir? This side. The right leg. And after that again, you went home, you slept peacefully, as you have not been sleeping before. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a wonderful clap offering for this awesome testimony. God oh, bless you, sir. Please tell us your name and your testimony. My name is Victor Joshua. Victor Joshua? Yes, sir. Okay, Victor Joshua. I was in the camp, Yansashi camp. So, when I was in the camp, I, I was told that there's going to be a program out of the pit. And this program will last for three days. So, I started contemplating out of the pit. What does it stand for? So, I started praying. I was praying on Wednesday. You know, this, pray, this, this program started on Friday. But I pray on Wednesday at about 5.30. I went to the place that I used to sleep. As I was sleeping, I began to hear a song. God of miracle, he has done it before. He will do it again. God of miracle, he has done it before. He will do it again. God of miracle, he has done it before. He will do it again. So I saw people were singing and they were dancing, jubilating. And I saw, a po in, I, it's like I was in a room. I saw a apostle coming into that room. As he came into that room, I now begin to welcome him. I welcome him. I was very happy to see him. I said, sir, I'm very, very grateful for the vision that God has given to you to establish this camp. Because this camp has helped a lot of people, has delivered a lot of people from, from bondage. So as Apostle was sitting down and he was with me laughing, I saw a being coming out from that room. And I was looking at the Apostle and I wanted to ask him, I said, sir, how, how come about this being coming out? But since he's the stranger, or I mean he's a visitor to me, I find it difficult to ask him. Because I know that I'm not supposed to ask him. He's the one who is supposed to ask me. Say, how come about this being? So when I look at the being, he came out just like in form of a lady. Black door. He went out straight to the, straight to the door. He went out. And he didn't greet anybody. So I waited for Apostle to react or do something about it. But suddenly, Apostle stood up from the place where he was sitting down. He went to the wall. In that wall, it like there was a 
photograph or enlargement that was hanging on the wall. So Apostle went there and saw the enlargement. He now turned it back, the face, to the wall. And I told him that, Apostle, that is not my picture. That picture does not belong to me. It's like this, they are, I'm a stranger in this place. So from there, I, he announced, okay, he will, come, he will meet me, he will, he, will, he will see me again. That is going to see me later. I said, okay, sir. Then I, I see him off. And now I escorted him to where he parked his car. Where he parked his car, the driver was there. He entered the car and went away. So uh, what am I trying to say is that <laughs> that being that I saw is like something that has been tormenting me for many years. So it was, it was a challenge because I was having a challenge in my womb. So since that Wednesday, I did not see any pains in that. Moment. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I, I think that's another level. Yes. Uh, that's another level entirely. <laughs> wow. And this is happening in the realm of the spirit. Yes. You know, light and darkness have no communication. You see how the Lord delivered this man. Uh, how do you know? Do you ask? Do you, yeah, I, what, does does he know Apostle? Yes, how do you know Apostle? Do you does he know him? Yes, I don't know Apostle. But I know, I know that uh, there was a, a day I visited that camp. And that was the day they were having, is it harvest? Something like that. Okay. Thanksgiving. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Annual Thanksgiving. So, before I went to that camp, I was, the very day I went to the camp, I placed my mat on the ground. I was lying down. That is where you appear. <laughs> in that sense, I saw that you appear and you were pushing something that was standing in front of me. You pushed it away from me. Then I woke up. That's the day they have that harvest. The day... That night before the day, they have the harvest. So that was your first experience meeting the apost apostle? Yes, in, in, the, in the realm of the spirit. Uh, and the second time again, when you met him, healing took place. For how long have you been having that pain in your stomach? I think I've been having that pain for about 12 years. 12 years. So you mean that since that Wednesday, yes, sir. then that problem is gone? That, that problem is gone. I've that been, woman, I've... that black tall woman, that, that being you saw, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. you know, left you, yes, then 12 sir. years of problem departed. Yes, sir. So you have been healed since that day, I'm busy. till now. Yes, sir. And it shall be forever. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's what I was telling you, that if I tell you of the development of God in the church, you know, God's development in the church, you may, you may understand, you may not understand. There is too much power now. That is, the power, I've been hearing of power, 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 power. But the Bible says that in the book of Psalm, it says, power belongeth unto God. And then Jesus Christ is the power of God. So we want to test power to power. Because we have this intention to get into the stadium and then make the world come to Jesus Christ by the gospel of the kingdom that you just hear it. You see that? That is not the work of man now. I've heard this several times, several places. Now you are a witness. You see that? So, you know, in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says God fills the heaven and earth. So if God is in you, you are like that. You see the breath which you breathe. You breathe in, you breathe out. Where is it? Where does it go? The breath. Let me tell you, the breath you breathed us this morning, some of them have reached Benin. Some have crossed over. The breath you breathe out of your nose, your nostrils, since morning, some have reached Portacot. If it's not reached, maybe it's on the way. It's traveling, and that is to show how big God has made a man to be. You are a planet. Amen. A man is as big as a planet or more than that. Where, where is that man from Benin you talk about? Yes, sir. Where, you are from Benin? Yes, sir. Can you stand here, gentleman? Uh, can you stand here? Uh, if you can just go straight to the point. 
I mean, that would be fantastic. How did it happen? What happened to you? My name is Chinedu Alikwe from Benin Center. Chinedu? Yes, sir. Chinedu what? Alikwe. Alikwe. Yes, sir. Wow. You're I'm, welcome, sir. I'm here because God did something wonderful in my life. God did something wonderful in your life? Yes. Okay, let's share that just straight to the point. Okay, last Sunday, I was in Benin. So after the fellowship, I told one of our deacons, Deacon Wang Goje, that I'll be coming to see him in the evening. So in the evening, I went to his house at uh, Jarway there. So he came in to pick me, and when we got to the house, I met him. He was listening. He was following the program, last Sunday's uh, program here online, live streaming. That's the evening fellowship. So he started introducing me to the program. He had, he had been following it for a very long time. So I was like, ah, it's really very important. So while we were listening to the program, I got a word. And that word, Apostle was uh, preaching, he said that Jesus Christ does not know the truth, that Jesus himself is the truth. And that means that... Where, where did you get that? I got it exactly from when you were, from you. Uh, by what means did you get that? Through the phone, the live streaming. Oh, the live, live streaming. streaming. Oh, the live the, streaming. The live streaming. Okay. So he said that Jesus Christ himself is the truth. And that means that when we know him, we know the truth. And he said the truth shall make us free. That's then, correct. When I got that word, the things started ringing in my mind. Although I've heard that before, but not in this way, not in this form. So I began to meditate on that word. And before I could leave, I said, okay, let us pray. And we started praying. Before we knew, it turned into a program. And I discovered that I received an instant healing. Before I told, I, I shared the testimony right away to him. I said, while I was in the fellowship, I was not feeling well. I was, you know, I was down. But immediately I received that word, and this prayer is going on. I said, right now I'm healed, I'm sound. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Does it mean that that the power in the word? Yes, sir. Heal him. That's how you got healed. Yes, sir. The power in the word. Yes, sir. That Jesus Christ does not know the truth. At all. That he, he himself, himself is the truth. Is the truth. Yes. So if you know him, yes. you have yes. known the truth. Yes. And the truth shall make you free. Yes. And then that word healed you. Amen. Give Jesus a shout in this place. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yes. We are going to confirm that miracle. Can you just go there? Wow. Wow. God bless you, sister. Please tell wow. us your name. That was awesome. Miracle. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Christian Nobuehi. And the Lord did a great, wonderful thing in my life. Even my beloved... Uh, Mommy that is standing here with me, she know what I'm talking about. Because since this uh, program has been announced, I don't know, I just feel very weak. So I became uh, very weak. So I was like, I'm down. So that very day, I began to tell my husband that he should call doctor. I don't know how my body is doing me. So my husband called a, fa a family doctor that we know that used to come to the house and treat us. So reaching on uh, Friday, Thursday, the man came and took my blood. The blood was very black. So he told me that he's going to come back on uh, Friday to re uh, bring the results. Friday, we didn't see him. He called that he's coming on Saturday. Then on Saturday, we didn't see him until the evening time before he came. So my husband hold me, didn't allow me to come for the program. But on, Thursday, on Friday, I was here. I didn't miss the program. And the Lord did great and marvelous thing in my life because I was feeling pain all over my uh, joints. I was feeling pain. So I was feeling pain in my rings. I could not be able to turn. If I lie down, if I want to get up, the place will be so heavy. So that on uh, Saturday, the doctor now came. He said that I have typhoid, I have malaria. That was what, malaria, uh, typhoid was 80 over 80. So how did you receive your healing? Now? So in this program, even when I came here this afternoon, I was having pain all over my leg. I cannot move the leg very well. 
Despite the doctor's treatment. Yes, I cannot move. Even when he gave me the treatment yesterday and went home, I started feeling a lot of pains all over my body. I told my husband, it's like the doctor went and revived everything. The pain started uh, as if it was just afresh. So, uh, and the pain was still there until I came here this evening. So as the man of God was praying, even as he was saying something, he mentioned the case. He said something could have hold you not to come. Because my husband said I should wait for the doctor to come. Before 3 o'clock, I left the house. My children, they are here. I left the house and I sent my son to come and call me that the doctor is at, at home. I didn't go. So, the Lord has healed me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap offering. We bless God for that awesome testimony. The presence of God is here, and that is why we are experiencing the glory and manifestation of God. Amen. God bless you, sir. Please tell us your name and go straight to the point, your blessing and experience in this program. Hallelujah. I'm Oliver Namde. Uh, my testimony happens after the first night on Friday. We got home. I slept. Then towards the early hour of the morning, it was in a dream. I found myself going home. I get to a particular point. There was a road, a place I saw, and it's toward that very place. If you follow that way, it will be very close. That is a shorter way to our house. Hallelujah. The funny part is that I said, okay, let me decide to take that very shorter way so that I can get home quickly. I was surprised. Descending on that very road, to my surprise, at the end, there was no more way to go. Hallelujah. At the end, everywhere was covered by a very big sea. I was surprised. I said, this road was not, did I miss my way? And I decided to go back again, to follow the normal way. As I got that very place, it became a very gigantic hill. To come out of that very place, became difficult. So your experience in the spirits were like obstacles. Yes. So what is your testimony now? And it was a very big pit. But when descending, there was very easy to go in. But at the time of coming out, it was, it, it was as high as this very hall. Hallelujah. And the difficult, the, the most dangerous part of it that there are a lot of people in, in there that, are, that want to come out. And there are those up there that want to come down too. But the, one pe the people on the down cannot render any help to anybody going out. Neither people up there to stretch forth their hand to do what? To assist you. Every man is on his own. But the testimony is there that the Lord helped me. I was immediately, I climbed. It was very, very difficult. It takes hours for me to be able to climb it. But as soon as I got out of it, I woke up. It was Saturday morning. Okay. Now, I know that was a miracle. Then after yesterday night, I got home again. At the early hour of this morning, something happened again. What was it that happened and why are you giving the testimony now? I have a junior brother that traveled out over eight years now. I've not heard from him. Hallelujah. But this morning in the dream, he returned back home. Amen. And there was joy as we are jubilating. I woke up. Amen. And I know that God has done a miracle Amen. that will soon manifest in my family. Amen. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap offering for this testimony. Yes, God is manifesting his power in the spirit and physical. Yeah. Amen. God bless you, sir. Please go direct to the point as you tell us your name and your testimony. I am Bra Sylvester from Ojo Barrack Center. It happens that uh, in three, three years ago, I had a dream. I came to the apostle to complain about my eldest brother. And instead of him attending to my brother's case, he focused on me and told me to see him the next day that I have a kidney infection. This was in the dream? In the dream. So when I woke up in the physical, I went to my pastor, Pastor Abiru, and he gave me Apostle's number. I called him. He, called, he asked me to see him the following day, which was Thursday. I came here. He prayed with me. 
He also advised that I would have gone for a test to confirm this thing after the prayer. I went to the lab. So the things that were listed for me to carry out were so expensive. I didn't do it. It was this open heaven uh, revival. The last day of the revival, I saw myself in the dream. The apostle manifested and laid his hand on that same portion that has been hurting me for several times. And he told me that that cancer, that I am healed of that cancer. Hallelujah. Were you around in the open heaven indoor crusade? Yeah, I was around. But this, what you are telling us now is in the dream that he came to lay hand on you. The last day of the, cru uh, of the revival. You know, the second day we came out, they gave us a sticker. So we were told to rub this sticker on our tummy. I did that. So the last day, which was Sunday, I found out that I slept and he, he, he brought his hands and laid his hand on my tummy and told me that I am healed of that cancer. So I woke up and ever since then, I have never felt any pain again. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of me. That's it. Amen. Open heaven. The presence of God is here and he's bringing us out of the pit. Amen. God bless you, sister. Please tell us your name, direct to the point, your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Alaba. My testimony goes like this. Two weeks ago, when I was so troubled concerning my situation. So as I'm troubled in that dream, and when I slept, I saw Baba at the dream. Apostle Edmond. Yeah, when I saw him, I said, Daddy, the place that I'm working, they are breaking this and that, I begin to complain. He said, Alaba, move forward. He said, I should move forward. He said, eh. I said, Daddy, move forward. He said, I should say you should move forward and you will see the salvation of the Lord. So I wake up. As he told me that, I wake up. So after that day, getting like four or five days again, I was see. I don't know. I said, I said God, you say I should move forward. What, how can I move forward? Just direct me to move forward. And what will take me to move forward? So as I'm complaining this thing, again, I saw Baba again. It's just like we are on the pulpit like this. So I was at the back. As Baba was there, he just... Cut arm to cut me at the back. As he cut me, I want to complain. He put me on the front of the pulpit here. He said I should remain with that God of the pulpit there. So as I was there, anointed death with me seriously in that sleep. So what I now is that yesterday that dream come to manifestation that our God did it perfectly in my life yesterday. And I give glory to Almighty God. Amen. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of ring. I could remember she was one of those that was delivered yesterday. When the apostle prophesied, God bless you, sister. Tell us your name and your testimony directly. My name is Sister Chinyeronia. I want to thank the Lord for delivering me from the spirit of death. After we came to that Abba Thanksgiving on the 29th, so on Monday I was attacked by the spirit of death. I had high BP instantly. So after about two days, it seems as if there was nothing in me, no strength, no life. So... After some days, I saw myself in the counseling section. I met uh, the brother. Then he placed his hand on my forehead. Lights came out and he placed his hand on my wrist. Then after about two days later, I was in the gathering like this. Apostle came. He touched his hand on my left ear. The sensation was so sweet. Then he placed his hand on my palms. Then I fell. When I fell, I didn't fall to the ground. I was floating. In between the ground and the, the air. So I was watching at myself what would happen to me in that room. Whether I'm, I was just looking at myself. So I was there for a very long time. Then I stood up. That was when my deliverance uh, took place. But I'm praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of me. The angel of the man of God is present and walking in the spirit. Amen. God bless you. Tell us your name and your testimony. My name is Onushu Feinwa. My testimony goes like this. 
this afternoon when I came back from church, I was having a severe headache. My, my body was paining me. I always have this heart pain that anytime like, I do anything that is stressful, the heart will jump. For how long have you been experiencing that? For a very long time, like let me say three years now. And I've been telling my my parents that I always have this heart pain. They'll just let me go to pharmacy and take drugs. Sometimes it will subside, it will start again. So this today. The team started in the afternoon, so it even had the can waste pain. I was like, okay, let me just take Prostam because I don't like taking medicine. I said, okay, when I come here, I will pray. I know that I will get my healing because today is the last day of this program. So when I came, I man, we now, man of God said everybody should pray. I was praying. Apart from that, I was just praying that God should heal me, my waist pain and my heart. And at the end of the prayer, my the head the headache just disappeared. You are not feeling all those pains anymore. Pain. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of we are not tired of giving glory to God Almighty. Amen. These are awesome testimonies. God bless you, ma. Please tell us your name and what God has done for you briefly. Sweet Elia in Seji. From Akoya Roundabout. It was um, on Tuesday Bible study. That night, PG of uh, Tuesday. The man of God. See the Tuesday that preceded this um, program. Program, night is of the program. Then Apostle said that if somebody had been pushed into the pit. Then I just waited a while. Nobody come out. I have to come out. I know that it's me. Because I I fell into the pit and since then I was passing physical pit or spiritual. Physical physical one. So Apostle prayed for me for it and then I have my instant healing. Praise the Lord. So you got your healing that Tuesday. So the miracle of out of the pit started since Tuesday. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is somebody blessed this evening? God bless you. Tell us your name and what God has done for you. My name is Joy Oyemi. My, my miracle goes like this. Yesterday. This my two legs was paining me so. When have you been feeling the pains on your legs? Since last week. So when I like, I came to and uh, the point yesterday. So I post now say she open our eyes. So she pray for us. When he pray for now say she use it to rub all our body. So when I do to rub when all, all my body. So when I now wish my mother my I, I told my mother that. My leg was pain. I said, I should take plaster. I said, I don't want that. I can't take my snacks. I said, is it that no? And I went to sleep. The next day, I was not feeling fine. Amen. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. We bless God for this wonderful moment, sir. <laughs> Today's episode of Your Moment of Recovery. And we believe that you have been blessed by the word from the anointed servant of God, Apostle Edmund. Have any questions, comments, prayer requests, and testimony you want to share with us? You can do that by sending them to the phone numbers and emails displayed on your screen. For we are ready to hear from you. We hope to see you in another exciting moment of recovery. God bless you.